terrible way to die. Peter Carey's boots, they look to be a size eight. Old navigation instruments, nothing interesting. Hmm, the ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book, a box or a small chest, perhaps. The initials PC have been crudely burned. A sailor's work. Rum, a sailor's drink. Someone drank from this glass recently. It seems that Captain Carey was enjoying a drink before he met his death. The Sea Unicorn. She was the ship that Peter Carey commanded. J.H.N. are probably the initials of the owner of this notebook. Hmm. The pattern of the blood stain indicates that the notebook was not lying on the floor prior to the crime, but it was dropped into the pool of blood after the death of Peter Carey. This blood is from the pool underneath the dead body. This wooden handle is plain and Peter Carey tried to defend himself with this knife, but he did not succeed. The weapon fully penetrated the body. The force of the blow was immense. This man is in his fifties, yet he still looks quite strong. Peter Carey was fully dressed. He was not caught by surprise. It is possible that he knew his murderer. Peter Carey. Peter Carey was impaled to the wall by a whaling harpoon. murder weapon was probably taken from this rack. These boots don't match the footprints. Have you finished inspecting the crime scene? These abbreviations mean something, but what? This aroma is familiar, but to recognize it, I must construct my associations in one picture.
Yes. This is a coarse tobacco, quite strong and very popular among sailors. Someone was here yesterday. They attempted to force the door to gain entry. Well, Mr. Holmes, what do you think? Now, I think that we are lucky. And why is that? Because of last night's attempted break-in. Oh, you've lost me. It is very probable that whoever came here hoped to find the door open. They tried to force it with a knife blade, but they failed. What will they do? Why, return tonight, when they will be better prepared. Aha! So what do you propose? We shall remain on the outside, near the window, where we stand the best chance of catching sight of our visitor. Well, gentlemen, ready your pistols. We have a long night ahead of us. Mr. Holmes? Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. Your husband's private papers. Do you know where they are? There was a small tin box, barely larger than a book. He kept his papers there. It should be somewhere in his cabin. You have indeed suffered a great loss, Mrs. Carey. Nevertheless, I believe it will be less of a burden for you, soon. Yes. Life with Peter was never easy. But he was still my husband. He was different, wasn't he, when you first met him upon your return from Plymouth? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, my goodness, but how do you know about that? You undertook a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela when you were young. That much is evident from the rosary in your hand. The shortest route for the pilgrim from England to Spain is from Plymouth. I believe that you met Peter Carey as a young sailor there, and you married him soon afterwards. That is indeed what happened, Mr. Holmes. How extraordinary. Thank you, madam. We need to find a good place for an ambush. Perhaps behind Carey's cabin, near the window. This looks like the perfect hiding place. fine fellow. Who are you and what are you doing here? You're detectives, I suppose. You imagine that I'm connected with the death of Captain Carey. I assure you I'm innocent. Innocent? And what are you doing in his cabin? Shall I tell you? You came to retrieve what you had lost after killing Peter Carey. But we were here waiting for you. 
What is your name? John Hopley Nelligan, but I... I didn't... Do you deny that you came here yesterday? No, but... but I... yes, it, it's just that I couldn't... I'm tired of this. Off we go to the yard. Tomorrow, I'll see that you're put in front of the judge. What? But you can't! I'm not... it's a terrible mistake! Enough! You can explain all of that to the judge. You're coming with me to the yard. But... In light of recent events, it seems evident that your coming here was unnecessary. All the same, I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. You are welcome, Inspector. But please don't be too hard on our young fellow. I would like to question him tomorrow morning. 